Yo, what's going on, you guys? You already know my name is Jay Strozer, and it's time for a review of Indie Tribe's debut album, Upper Hand. I was very excited for this project and the announcement of the new and improved Indie Tribe Collective. As we already know, Indie Tribe started off with No Big Deal, Mowgli the Iceberg, Jerry Mana, and of course, What Up RG. But after Jerry Mana and What Up RG had departed, it kind of left the future of Indie Tribe kind of up in the air because it was just two members. But with this project, they had the addition of John Keith and DJ Michael V. Now, I was fairly familiar with DJ Michael V in 2019 and 2019. 2020 as he had a few appearances on songs, most notably songs with No Big Deal on his Lowercase Tape project. And I hadn't really been too fond of John Keith in the past. I only liked his two songs, Come Around and Anything You Want, off of his debut project with King's Dream Entertainment, Lost Boys. And pretty much all the other projects that he had dropped under Ruslan's King's Dream Entertainment were kind of just okay. Nothing really that stuck with me. But No Big Deal, I've pretty much always liked. And Mogi the Iceberg drew in some of my attention when he released Let's Talk About Our Feelings, but showed a lot more potential in his summer 2020 album sad people make dope music too now i only like five songs off of that project but the five songs that i liked are absolutely perfect songs and i just think they're incredible so i'm giving this new indie track project a very very thorough listen and so let's just get into the review this was the second single release for this project and i will tell you it is an absolute banger the aggressive and slightly mysterious sounding instrumental produced by 1995 and wild eli was executed very well john keith and nobody deal really outdid themselves lyrically with bar after bar after bar deal had a hell hilarious line where he said daddy said man you this were you the holy crap and he had an encyclopedia of a bar where he said harder than my demons i got screw tape deep in denial me and overdose has dropped his screw tape for the free now now if you don't understand that i would just suggest that you go on rap genius or check out isaiah paul's breakdown of this lyric it's like an incredible bar and that's just one of dylan's many bars that have either gone over my head or took a while for me to dissect throughout this whole project and john keith really did exceed my expectations on this track indie tribe ball like nba but i never hoop about my business with no nba i dropped out of school and the junkies in my dna line was really really good it made me reminisce on the era of john keith belief and Russo Slon's short-lived rap group. Just overall, John Keith had really smooth flows and clever bars throughout this track. I was very impressed. Do you see this clear like crystal? DJ Michael B's contributions to this track is an absolute chef's kiss. But it was in this track that I began to have quite a few concerns. Obviously, No Big Deal is the most successful, popular, and best rapper within Indie Tribe. So my hope is that we didn't see No Big Deal outshining John Keith and Mowgli throughout this project, but that was what happened quite a few times. His verse was very, very slick with a lot of creative one-liners. Most notably, I really like the Bishop, Chess, T.D. Jakes line. And he finished off his verse with a very intricate rhyme pack flow that was phenomenal. But on the chorus, John Keith had like a awkward delivery with some pretty corny lines. Hey look, pop like pistol. Do you see this clear like crystal? Too fast like the hopped out the whip, ooh. They ain't wanna see this, then I'm flipped through. That didn't really connect with me like that. It seemed a bit underwritten. However, his verse did have a very funny, clever simile between God, Stains, and Mr. Clean, though. I kind of like that. But the I ain't the one Billie Jean line w was just a little bit something that I think is very overused because too many rappers do that. Overall, his verse wasn't terrible. It just didn't really grip me. Mogus' verse was decent, nothing too flashy. I would say that the biggest problem with his verse is his rapping voice. Mowgli sounds the best and the most confident when he is using his emo voice. Looking back at his 2020 project, Sad People Make Dope Music 2, he was very, very consistent in his vocal tones. And he pretty much used the emo voice in that whole project because it was an emo rap project. So Mowgli the Iceberg, if you see this, Emo rap is your lane. Emo anything is your lane. And you are great within that lane. Mowgli's rapping voice here sounds a little dated and unlike him, even though that is the voice that he rapped in when he first came on the scene. But the 808s on this instrumental were really thumping. Wow Eli did a great job on the production. What a blessings coming top down. Now, first off, I wanna say, this instrumental sounded like the Great Value Walmart version of Playboy Cardi's Magnolia, which was produced by Pierre Bourne. But at just two minutes and 23 seconds, I really did like everyone's energy on this track. John Keith sounded very confident and aligned on his short but killer verse. I love Dill on the chorus when he had the little salt and lot line, which if you don't understand, if you read the Bible, God told this man named Lot to leave a city called Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, when you leave, don't ever look back. However, his wife ended up looking back on the city and turned into a pillar of salt. So that was a very clever hilarious line but i would say my favorite line in his verse was when he said i still got the holy ghost and i ain't rolling in a phantom no designer but i know designer like i wrote on panda now Moby's verse was solid um i liked the first half of it but he switched his cadence and rapped in a higher register 
which is a little bit disappointing because I did like it when he rapped in the lower register. But overall, I did like everyone's energy and rhymes on this Magnolia Great Value beat. This is a perfect, flawless track and also happened to be the first single released for this project. Mowgli's vocals on the chorus were so soothing and very, very well written and his emo voice sounded absolutely flawless. Like, this is his lane. Dilly had like a perfect hopeful spirit that discoursed throughout his verses and of course he had many killer bars throughout i'm not going to dissect every any of them because i would like really prefer for you guys to like listen to it really sit down because i i really do think this is a great track it'll probably be one of my most listened to songs on the apple music top 20 chart i went diamond 24 carat <sighs> this song did it's not it. It's a bit of a sad ballad, um, which I typically like more melancholy songs on any music project, but not this one. John Keith basically went up on the mic and said, I'm gonna try to do my best Polo G slash Juice World impression. And it wasn't executed well. And midway through the chorus, he was like really straining his vocals, sounding like he was slightly in pain. I went diamond 24 carat. I think the chorus would have been much better if Mowgli solely did it by himself as he did towards the back end of the song. Mowgli's verse was fairly enjoyable. Just talking about different struggles that he's had in the past and how he's working out of some of those struggles. He did have this pocket towards the end of his verse where he would be in a middle register and go up to a higher register, which was a little bit rocky, but I would definitely like to see him do this more in the future because he is really progressing quickly as an artist. This is the absolute best song on the album. I knew from the minute that I heard the melody and the instrumental that I would fall in love with the song. Also to my surprise, John Keith had a producer producer credit alongside the producer Harz. And DJ Michael V brought such a cool energy to the song that was so fitting and the outro that he did made me, <laughs> I was legitimately laughing out loud the first time that I heard it. Once again, Dylan had some great lines on the joyfully infectious chorus. Baby girl holy and she hot, only time I'm cuffing like a cop. Like a rolly I don't stop, on my grind Tony Hawk, because on a Rolex the second dial doesn't take, it just glides across. Also Tony Hawk is a professional skateboarder and a lot of times skateboarders will grind on any edges or something like that, so on his grind Tony. His verse was great, but the got the fear of God and I'm in the fear of God's line was, <laughs> I can see that being something that is going to be like kind of corny in the future because so many rappers, especially ones that are Christians, overuse it, but I'm glad that he was one of the first to do it. Also the line where he said, baby girl sweet as Sara Lee in all sincerity because Sara Lee is a cheesecake brand and cheesecake obviously is sweet. Also John Keith did very great and he spit his best verse right next to his verse on Holy Smoke. I love the part where he said, I need bags for my my chips because usually you have a bag of chips and then bags like bags of money because I don't know just he really took my surprise and I really loved his verse this is just an overall great track and it will definitely be my most listened to track on this project now this was a more melancholy ballad but I did like this one a lot more than the 24 karat one Mowgli delivered a beautifully dreary verse which I think definitely deserves a music video guys if you see this please do a music video for the song John Keith spit a very compelling self-reflective verse with some really killer one-liners my dreams keep me up more than nightmares trying to kill the old me like Gemini man which is a reference to that awful Will Smith movie I'm pinning only half of my thoughts cuz they ain't half as dark then no big deal came in with some phenomenal rappermanship in his verse I'm not gonna really dissect all his bars because I really encourage you guys to just to sit and listen to his verse provided by the one who took two fish and multiplied them like Pisces which if you don't know what Pisces is, it's a zodiac astronomical sign, which is two fish. If you multiply fish, it's like Pisces. Just, you get it, you know what I'm saying. I put the hammer down like my brother's Liam. This feels like a West Coast backpack rapper cypher with a sprinkle of the craziness of Florida. The over the top atlas with the refraining, whoa, 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 between each verse was very, very fitting for the energy that the track brought. Every single artist was spitting, spitting on this, including DJ Michael V with his energy that he brought to the track. John Keith said, I put the hammer down on brothers Liam, which is a reference to Chris Hensworth and Liam Hensworth, who are Australian brothers who both act. Chris Hensworth most famously plays the character Thor because he said, I dropped the hammer on my brothers Liam because he has a little brother named Liam. That is incredible. And Moby said, I'm writing algorithms and soon you'll address me like I'm Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg is the CEO of Facebook and Facebook is the absolute chairman of algorithms. So that was a phenomenal line. And I love the shot he took out illiterate rappers who signed bad contracts and then end up getting robbed of all their money. And Dill started off his verse with a, uh, just 
just an obnoxiously hilarious line where he said, a Bible verse in your bio, but you probably listen to WAP, referencing Cardi B and Make the Stallion song. And his, I got the Holy Ghost, it's holy smoke, you catch a second hand bar, was just, uh, just one of the many hilarious and creative bars that he spit throughout this project and many of his other projects in the past. Yo, Pierre, you wanna come out here? So, when it comes to this album, I did not have high expectations, I did not have low expectations, but I had mid expectations, and those mid expectations were met. I don't know if this project has that compelling factor which will draw me to keep listening to it as the months go by, like a Kendrick Lamar album would, or Andy Mineo album would, or Kanye album would, or maybe even a No Big Deal project, because a lot of his projects I still go back and listen to. The gripes on this album made it difficult to listen to. Example, the top-down instrumental that I thought was pretty whack. But the highlights on this album were pretty nice. So, Indie Tribe, Upper Hand. Do you agree with my review? If so, let me know the specifics of why you agree in the comments section. If you hate my review, please feel free to dislike and crucify me in the comments section. And as always, remember to stay productive and don't act stupid. Willie Chase with the pen, I'ma have to set a trend. I'ma pop by the end. Got too many famous friends. Spirit moves when I'm weak, so I wear it like my skin. Till my scars and my pain, and I turn it to